Baptist choristers descend on the Priory Church of Eddington in Wiltshire. In one week, they will rehearse and sing an incredible 25 services. It'll be all right, I think, but it's just, it's, it's a pretty big undertaking. 2005 is the 50th anniversary of this unique festival of church music, turning this quiet village into the focus of a musical pilgrimage. It's such an amazing and unique experience. It's something to be valued. In just a few hours, over 70 of the country's top choristers will arrive in Eddington. They will sing to a packed church four times a day for a week. It all demands a huge amount of preparation from this normally sleepy Wiltshire village. Sometimes I feel it's quite impossible. <laughs> Villager Christine Laslett is responsible for organising everyone's accommodation. <laughs> to begin with, there are no tickets and no charges. Everybody comes as they would go to a church service anywhere. I mean, where could you go for a free seat and hear this quality of music? I don't know, it's, it's fantastic. Some of our finest musicians come year after year to the festival. Andrew Carwood will direct one of the choirs. He is taking a week out of a normally packed schedule, teaching and performing music around the world. Here we are at Seattle Airport, and it's 10 to 1 in the morning. For me personally, running around the world, getting off and on planes, leaping onto concert platforms, getting on the next flight the next day is pretty constant stress. I'm looking forward to getting down to this tiny country village down in Wiltshire, where um, the peace and the stimulation are two things which I value more than I can say. Like everyone else at Eddington, Andrew will be giving his time for free. The final touches to the church are overseen by the verger, Peter Norfolk Brown. There's a tremendous loyalty to the church. We make sure that the church is prepared for the, the services. That involves the, um, the setting up of the altars, the preparation of the, the silver, making sure that all the candles are scraped and prepared and uh, ready for the services. One feels a bit weary by the end of the week. But it's a very pleasant weariness when, when we eventually get there. World without end, please. World without end, let Andrew Carwood is one of the first to arrive. Can you just, can you just put he gets straight on? down to rehearsing with his new choir, one of three specially formed for the week of the festival. Expressive. The T is still too wet and exultate for me. Exultate, as if you were a very echt Italian. Andrew and the choristers are carrying on a tradition which began 50 years ago. David Calcutt was a choral scholar at King's College, Cambridge. And um, whilst there, he'd made the acquaintance of a priest called Ralph Dudley. And then Ralph came to this fantastic 14th century priory church in Wiltshire. He said, isn't it a shame that there's no cathedral-type music going on in England during August? So they came up with a mad idea of coming down here for a weekend and um, bringing some singers and singing the weekend services. And it's grown from there into this very, really very sophisticated, well-established festival. Knock, knock. Anybody home at the Hickses? Hello, Christine. Malvina. Hello, Sarah. And Brett, you're comfortable. Christine has to find 70 free beds for all the singers. That's lovely, and we have also got another bed for any other That's singers. That's brilliant. Them. Another local volunteer, Sheila Miles, has the task of getting the choir's robes ready. I love being involved with this. For years, I didn't get involved. I thought, no, that music is not for me, but it's wrong. It's the music and the services are for anyone. 
And some people's been coming ever since it started. I mean, how, you know, how devotional can you be? Jeremy Budd has been going to Eddington since he was a boy chorister at St Paul's Cathedral. He's now a professional tenor. I think this is going to be my 19th year on the trot. I just love seeing everyone down there. The music and the, and the friendship is it's just, it's just hilarious. I have a great time. In Eddington, some of the best boy choristers from all over the country are arriving. Um, OK, well, they're Kate and Christopher Sykes, and they're nice people, and they're used to having boys from Durham. They've had several. You know who you're staying with? Sit in the mirror. Swimming pool, tennis court. Make the most of it. Me too. Elliot Francis Mullins. Oh, right. So you are going quite near, actually. What you have to remember is that most of these guys have never sung together before, certainly the young ones. So they've got to get coordinated and get used to their director. And this is it, first service tonight. Wonderful. Make sure you watch me because I want to do a little bit of a writ there, but it won't work if you don't watch, obviously. Just two hours before the opening service, and director Robert Quinney brings the boys together as a choir for the first time. And boys, keep the line going, please. It's only a couple of bars long in the first phrase of, of the Kyrie. Robert is the assistant organist at Westminster Abbey. He's also something of a perfectionist. Shall we try that again? beginning of the week I have a collection of 16 boys from eight different cathedrals. Um, they've never sung together before, generally. OK. Just a couple of mistaken entries there. We need to do it again. Boys, don't flunk that entry in 34. The challenge is, well, first of all, just to teach them the music. And the second thing is different choirs in different places have different styles. And suddenly here, they all have to sing together for this building, which is, I think, probably quite different from the ones they're used to. OK, don't ruin that by singing a D-sharp at the end, because it was so good before that. It can be, I think, quite an unnerving thing for them, and suddenly they're thrown in right at the deep end. You know, actually, there's no time to be too worried, though I am still, nevertheless, worried. <laughs> Back here, please, to start singing at 22, 20 to 8. Yeah. Nearly everyone in the village helps out with the festival in some way. I'm in charge of the stewards. Actually, I like car parking because it's it's actually it's just like morigami. Just trying to get them in here, you know, or, or origami, whatever. whatever. Um, not bumping into each other. Yeah. Down the other end is a lot easier. Yeah, you probably did. Where am I supposed to go? The congregation gather for the first service of the festival, an evening worship called Compline. Compline is a very moving short service that's. Uh, here, done in candlelight, and all about darkness, taking rest, taking stock at the end of a day, and giving yourself over to God in the coming night. And there's something rather fine and beautiful about that. You've got a, you need surpluses as well. Actually, I can sort you with surpluses oh, no. later. Yeah. Yeah. All these chaps have come, and they form up into their choirs, and they sing Compline for the first time together. And they've had perhaps a little bit of rehearsal that evening. And suddenly they sing together, you know, just like angels. It's fantastic. 
As the boys prepare themselves, the first service is opened with plain song, continuing a tradition of monastic prayer in this church that is 650 years old. Then after just one rehearsal, the boys sing a beautiful Thomas Tallis response. After the first service, there's finally time for people to get reacquainted with each other and the local beer. Early starts are essential for Andrew, as director of the hardest working choir at the festival, singing plain chant four times a day, beginning with Matin's rehearsal at 8.30. Right, so we bow to the altar, we turn inwards, we bow to each other. The first two days are very crucial for me. If I can establish a rhythm and an approach to the stuff, then the rest of the week will look after itself. That's this church was uh, originally an Augustinian foundation. The monks would have sung in exactly the part of the church where we're sitting now, the chancel. They would have come in here probably seven times a day and they would have prayed and sung together. You get a sense of centuries of worship coming together just, just from singing the chant in this place. Being in this building with the people who want to be here, with the light when the sun is streaming through the windows, is, I think, is, is just wonderful. Um, and I love the stillness and the rhythm of it. I, I suppose I don't think I've ever really thought of going into matters. It was very nice, but I must admit, I did feel a bit, I don't know how to explain, odd. You're not sure when to sit and when to stand. <laughs> You know, so, but it was lovely. Matins completed, it's only two hours until the next full service demanding all three choirs, including Jeremy's. Bright as a daisy, bright as a button. It's uh, quite a late night last night. Sort of three o'clock ish. Well, here and I thought it was the best service we've been to for several years. So. <laughs> Hold on to your hats. I think there's always, always a danger that you're going to be late. Sometimes it can be a very late night, and to get up for a 10 o'clock rehearsal is quite tough. But it's, uh, it's a test of stamina. So let's do the MF, let's make it an MP. And then we can go crazy at the following question. Jeremy's a tenor in the only Eddington choir to include male and female voices. Most singers that I know are just, you know, just they're just normal people. You have a, you have a life. You go to the pub. You play sport. Whatever. Um, 
I don't consider myself anything out of the ordinary just because I sing. I just think the music sounds fantastic. I don't know, it's just amazing sound. And I just thought, I want to be part of that. The chorister's hard work is easily matched by Eddington's own army of volunteers. Yeah, it, it, parking on the side is, is quite tight, and the bank is uh, quite steep. And so the larger the vehicle, the more likely they are to go in here. But since this is the first year this car park has been available, they look upon me with great suspicion as if I'm leading them to Aberystwyth. This one, I've just got the wheelchair out and taken him in. I, I on my list? Am I what? On my list. No. Oh, come on then. I didn't know how to be. Sorry. I'm a member of the, the, the village, I'm a member of the congregation, and uh, it's probably the least one can do. Um, I attend all the services and festivities, so it's a bit in return. Goes off extremely smoothly, and it's a large gathering of people, and there's a lot of organisation and feeding, and the kids, and the organisation of the and the admin of the festival itself. It's a huge undertaking. Thank you very much. Hundreds visit the festival over the week, including music lovers from abroad. They come not for a series of concerts, but because this is some of the finest church music in the world within a service, the liturgy. For me, it's it's like a religious retreat to sit at the throne of God for a week. Yes, the liturgy's fine, and the music is absolutely splendid. At occasions like this, there is so much music that um, there's always a risk of it being some kind of concert with prayers. Now, I don't think that happens at Eddington. You have, I think, here people directing the festival who are very um, well-versed in things to do with liturgy and worship and the place of music within that, and I think that's absolutely crucial. I think the marriage of the liturgy and the music is what this festival is about. All of the music that we sing here was designed for the liturgy, by which I mean composers. They're not thinking of it for a concert hall. They are always thinking of a service. I think, hopefully, that people will take away from the ceremonial as well as the music. Certainly, uh, the festival week gives me a time for a sort of retreat. It's rather a noisy retreat, it's not very silent, but nevertheless it's a time uh, where I get away from what I normally do. My parish is in the east end of London and yeah, couldn't be more different than rural Wiltshire, I must say. Let's go and um, get them up, I think. Good morning. Anybody awake? Come along, rise and shine. How's Kit? Are you in the land of the living Kit? Yes. You're able to get yourselves up. Can I trust you not to go to sleep again? Yes. Absolutely for sure. Yes. You look very wide awake. That's good, you'll keep him going. Oliver and Kit are both full-time choristers at Westminster Abbey, who have given up a week of their school summer holidays to sing at Eddington. It's like a Sunday every day, except a little less, because we sing three services at Westminster Abbey. We have um, solemn Eucharist, and then in the afternoon, solemn even song. And then we have a um, solemn. <laughs> and uh, the acoustic's much smaller. The... So you need to work a bit, quite a bit harder to actually get it more resonant. Let's go and see. They're going to come up and bang on the door any minute, I should think. The grey pony's just going The pace is unrelenting. After each service, planning starts immediately for the next one. We start rehearsing at 8.30 in the morning. We are singing at 9 o'clock. 
and uh, it's uh, it's quite a hard job having to sing four services a day. Oh, good. Oh, the rest of Everything in the festival happens in this incred incredibly intense amount of time. It is sort of horrifying, really. Matthew, perhaps you could just remind the boys of their first phrase. <laughs> boys, I'm going to sing it to you. Just follow while I sing it and work out where the beats are. Magnifica. OK, let's go from the second bar. I think the boys are taken a little bit by surprise by how hard they have to work here and also how late they have to work because, I mean, generally they're finished their service by 6.30 at the latest. That's when we start rehearsing. Then I think they're sometimes a little surprised that they have really quite a lot uh, to do to, to get a piece ready for that evening. You're just delaying a bit. Magnificat. Sing through man. And it must be really bright from you and prompt as well. Quite a lot of you are late. Today is the first performance of the new set of canticles written for the service by Judith Bingham. None of the boys have, have seen it before, at least they claim not to have seen it before, and it sounds as if they haven't seen it before, so um, we're working really quite hard on that. OK, thank you. The new piece of music is a Magnificat, specially commissioned for the festival. So it sounds like an ornament. There have been some rather dodgy moments, but I think they're starting to gain in confidence. Look, well done. We're really getting somewhere. I'm, we're not, you know, there yet, are we? But it's sounding very good indeed. Your recital is for... Mm. Recital is 4.30. 4.30, yes. yes. It is tiring. I'd say this is work. It's work, but it's, a, it's like, I don't know, it's like, it's like getting yourself dirty when you go out and work in the garden or something, you do heavy digging or something. It's good, it's good tiredness. Lee starts another over, and he bowls a short ball that's hit in the air. Any nerves about the first rendition of the new piece are kept at bay temporarily by the annual cricket match. Jeremy is captain of the boys' team. Fine. No it's the biggest game of the year. It's, um, it's what Eddington's all about, really, to be honest. We've whipped them for the last three years running, so it's no, no competition. Now, Hoggard's bowling, and he's driving the ball. He's He's quite a fast bowler, and it's quite nerve wracking when, when you haven't got any protection. This is a very heavy bat and a very big helmet. Fire oh, Kurtz and he bowls a ponting outside your stump and cracked away the ball. It was short. Plenty of applause. I think we were diddled. But, uh, but there's next year. Next year. We'll, we'll get them next year, don't worry. The cricket over, the boys' full attention goes back to the performance of the new music. I feel satisfied. I think it's, I think it's gone pretty well. I hope the boys have got, you know, quite a lot out of the week. That, that's one of the purposes of it. It's not just about the actual performances that we give, it's about the learning curve that they're on. It's been quite steep. It may be that I've chosen a little too much music this year that's unfamiliar, I think, but, uh, you know, they've done a really good job. The week for the boys is just a, as much about having fun as it is about working hard, and the two things sort of balance each other. Are there fireworks going on? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 50th festival, the final Eucharist this morning. It's delightful to see you all with us here today and uh, to share in our final service. 
We're very grateful to all the singers for their wonderful singing during the course of this week, and uh, we look forward to sharing this final act of worship together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And, and also with you. to his beloved rest, and to us and to all his servants, life everlasting. Amen. 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 Thank you all very much indeed. It's marvellous to be here. Thank you. Scola, would you put your surplices over that far gravestone, and then I need your cassocks downstairs. Tired now, a few late nights, um, and quite a lot of hard work, quite a lot of play as well. It's all part and parcel of the festival, but uh, no, it's good. Feels feels nice to have been back and done it all again. There's an emptiness, um, and you feel it actually in the church. It's very still, very quiet, because the great bustling community of the festival uh, has gone away and it's, uh, it's a very different quietness. It's been a wonderful, wonderful week and we are carrying on what other people originated because we've experienced the joy that the week does bring to an awful lot of people. A remarkable experience from start to finish. It's something to be valued and we're almost grateful that it happens here. Well, the hairy bikers have got to dump their bikes for alternative means of transport around Vietnam next tonight. Food and travel on the way. And if that's not good enough for a good Wednesday night in, don't forget, it's The Apprentice at nine. <laughs>